What's up, you guys? So I am here with an update in the divorce drama between Jeezy, the snowman, and Jeannie Mai. Jeezy is demanding that Jeannie Mai's divorce lawyers be disqualified as the battle over their prenup heats up. Jeezy filed a motion to disqualify Jeannie Mai's attorneys, Randall Kessler and Stephen Kirsten. And I feel like on this channel, we hear a lot about Randall Kessler. That's who Portia is also using to divorce Simon. That's who Cordell Stewart used to divorce her. Like, it's a very popular law firm. And Jeezy explains why he wants Jeannie Mai to fire her attorneys. He said he did not file this motion lightly. He said Jeannie Mai hired Kessler and Kurson to represent her in the negotiation of their prenup in 2021 and then used them again in the divorce. And he said, of course, she made an excellent choice in picking them and picking Kessler and Kurson. And he called them among the greatest accomplished and certainly most highly regarded family law attorneys in the state of Georgia. So, of course, he's going to compliment them before he takes them down. He said, quote, more effective representation in family law matter would indeed be difficult to find. As far as Jeannie Mai, she's allegedly saying that she doesn't believe the prenuptial agreement is unenforceable, but she's also not certain that it should be enforced. And that's because she didn't have enough time to review his finances before she signed it. She asked the judge to hold off on enforcing it in the divorce. And she said the prenup talks didn't start until five days before the wedding. So she is arguing that she didn't have enough time to comb through Jeezy's finances to ensure the prenup was fair. And again, she used the same attorneys that she's using now for the prenup. And so Jeezy is saying, quote, Jeannie Mai questioned not only the financial disclosures made by Jeezy attached to the prenuptial agreement, but also the totality of the negotiating process. So Jeezy pointed out that Jeannie Mai listed her attorneys, Kessler and Kirsten, as persons whom she knows or believes to have knowledge of facts supporting or tending to support her claims and contentions in this action and or whom she intends to call as a witness in this matter. So because her attorneys represented her in the prenuptial agreement and she's questioning the validity of the prenuptial agreement because she had to sign it so quickly, she's calling on her attorneys as witnesses because they were the attorneys for the prenuptial agreement. And so Jeezy is saying that's a problem. Basically, how are you going to be a lawyer and a witness and question the validity of the prenuptial agreement that you were the lawyer for? I get what he's saying. On the motion, it says, quote, given the fact that Jeannie Mai has questioned her ability to effectively review and negotiate the prenuptial agreement, which due diligence process would have been spearheaded on her behalf by Mr. Kessler and Mr. Kirsten, and further has questioned the financial disclosures of Jeezy, which financial disclosures were reviewed by Mr. Kessler and Mr. Kirsten, and then specifically mentioned the compressed time frame of the overall negotiation process, Mr. Kessler and Mr. Kirsten would presumably be offered by Jeannie Mai to present testimony on her behalf in support of those alleged circumstances. I swear, you guys, sometimes I feel like these court documents are trying to use as many words as possible. Like they get paid by the word. Sheesh. So I'm not going to read all of this word for word, but I will tell you guys the issue. Jeezy is saying, you know, Jeannie is questioning the validity of the prenuptial agreement. But the lawyers that she wants to call as also witnesses, they were the lawyers for the prenuptial agreement. And he's saying that it's just too much, that she needs to use a different set of attorneys. And he added in that initially she was going to use different attorneys. And he's saying maybe she should go ahead and use the ones that she was going to use initially in the divorce because these attorneys are too involved. It's like they're questioning the same document that they represented Jeannie on when she signed that document. So it's an interesting argument. I get what he's saying. I, I totally get what he's saying. But y'all leave a comment and let me know what you think about the situation. What do you think about Jeezy saying that Jeannie needs to get some new attorneys, like their witnesses, their attorneys in the divorce, but they were also attorneys in the prenuptial agreement? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. All right, you guys, I also wanted to give you another court update. Eminem is losing his fight with Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon over being deposed in the shady trademark case. Y'all know he is saying that he has a trademark on the word shady. 
and their podcast, Reasonably Shady, is infringing on his trademark. Radar Online is reporting that Eminem suffered a setback in his battle with Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon, and he will have to sit for a deposition despite his efforts to avoid one. Now, a deposition is a question and answer session conducted outside of the courtroom, but still under oath. And the reason for a deposition is so that attorneys can gather information and facts from witnesses they believe will help their client's position in a case or hurt their adversary's position. And so Eminem didn't want to sit down and do this. He wanted his lawyer to do it for him. He wanted his lawyer to do it for him, but the United States Patent and Trademark Office Board ruled in the case and the board did two things. Number one, they did deny Giselle and Robin's recent motion to make Eminem sit for a deposition because they felt it was premature. It wasn't time yet. But they did say, yes, he is going to have to be deposed shortly. He is going to have to be deposed. The board denied Eminem's motion for a protective order that would prevent him from being deposed. And as you all know, last year, Giselle and Robin filed to trademark the name Reasonably Shady for the name of their podcast. And the duo wanted the rights to sell products with the name and use it for various purposes. And that's when Eminem stepped in and he claimed to have used the Slim Shady and Shady trademark since 1996. And people are saying the reason he is suing them has to do with his daughter's podcast. His daughter's podcast also uses the name Shady. So even though he doesn't mention it in court, People see his daughter has a podcast with the name Shady, and that seems to be what is compelling him. The court documents say Robin and Giselle's mark recently Shady simply looks and sounds like Shady and suggests that it represents the services of Marshall Mathers. That's what Eminem's lawyer said. He said recently Shady so resembles Marshall Mathers' mark Slim Shady, Shady, and the mark Shady Limited in terms of appearance, sound, and commercial impression as to be likely when applied to Robin and Giselle's goods to cause confusion and mistake and to deceive. So they are saying that people are gonna confuse Giselle and Robin <laughs> with Slim Shady. I still just don't see it. I feel like Giselle and Robin, people know who they are and their Reasonably Shady podcast. I feel like it stands alone. I don't feel like there's any confusion, but I wanted to give you an update. So far, Eminem is losing in this case as far as having to sit for a deposition. So leave a comment and share your thoughts about it. As always, thanks for watching.